Good evening, everyone, or I guess good evening to some of you, good afternoon to some of you, and uh, even to a few of you coming from other places around the world, uh, good morning. Uh, this is Anthony Hitt, and this is our first uh, after hours. Um, I go over after hours, and I'm just gonna tell you right off the top, this is a little bit of an experiment. I've been watching what our academy has been doing the last few days with some of their coffee times and other sessions, and they've been absolutely brilliant. So I think the bar's been raised pretty high. Um, the reason we decided to call this after hours is because everyone uh, who's watching this, I believe is working so hard right now during the business hours of trying to, to run their businesses, to, to, to put things together and whatever that new way is. And uh, I wanted something that was a little more personal, a little more self-oriented versus the world oriented. And so this is our chance to do something together after hours. Uh, before I go much further, well, actually, let me tell you a little bit about the objective of what we're trying to do. Uh, it, it's my, you know, just like we do with our elite retreat each year, I always look at some of the things that I'm trying to deal with in, in my head and some of the things that I hear you all talking about, uh, whether it be on social media or chatting me or emailing me directly, uh, what are the things that you're dealing with? And, uh, and that's kind of what we want to do with this is talk about some of those, those issues, because as the, the marketing pieces that have gone out for this have said, you know, we're all doing so much right now and we're always busy. We're busy people. And it seems hard that we could even be more busy than we used to be. And at the same time, we're more busy doing what we're doing. We're also doing a lot of things differently than we're used to doing. And so that makes it even more complicated. So not only working more hours, we're doing a lot of learning and new things at the same time, which can be a little stressful. And then with everything else that's going on in the world that's already stressful, there's a lot of other fears and anxieties and things that come in our way. So the idea of this session is not specifically to talk about real estate. We're not going to be looking at the, the top 10 things you can do to, to coronavirus proof your business or how to uh, shift your business plan uh, or even special methods about how to pick up clients or whatever. That's not what this is about. That's what the academy sessions during hours are for. This is how do you replenish your own energy? How do you maintain all of those skills or techniques, what are the techniques you can use to maintain your energy, to maintain the mindset you need to be the leader that I know you are. And, and that by the way, I've witnessed so much of what you're doing. I mean, we talk about having a culture of leadership as a brand and you all are just magnifying that and exemplifying that at, at every step of the way. I'm so impressed and so proud of everything you're all doing. You're an inspiration to all of us in, uh, in the headquarters. So with that, I try to think about who would be some of the best people that I could have or invite uh, to share with you uh, topics and, and techniques and, and ideas uh, on these uh, on these ideas. And oddly enough, these are two of our brand's friends. Uh, both of the, the, the guests we have tonight are people who have been on the exchange stage. Uh, both of these guests have actually co-hosted uh, one of our elite retreats with me over the years. Uh, Kirsty in Hawaii, in Maui, and uh, and Matthew in uh, in Vail this last year, um, and both of them have real estate experience as well, which is is interesting. Obviously, uh, Matthew's been in the industry for a long time, a long time, and uh, uh, has consulted with and and helped a lot of uh, agents and brokers along the way. Uh, Kirsty, on the other hand, was a a, a top agent, uh, number one uh, agent in uh, in Australia for years. And, uh, and has also become a, a great speaker. So these are the guests I've invited. Uh, I'm gonna start with you, uh, Kirsty. I just let you uh, an opportunity to, uh, to say hello to the people you know and hello to the people that you might not know yet who are gonna get to know you tonight. Kirsty. Hello, well, shout out to Sandra and Nicole who said they were gonna be tuning in. Um, I love my ENV peeps. So many of them stay in contact on Facebook and obviously you and Sean are two of my favorite people. So I'm really excited to be here. We've been chatting for about an hour before this call um, with yourself and Matthew, and I'm just, I'm hyped for all the juiciness that is to come in this call and this connection. Um, obviously, in terms of what I do, you know, as you said, I have a history in real estate in the top 100 of 120,000 agents worldwide some 10 years ago, transitioned into motivational speaking, and I also do a lot of work in the healing space with mindfulness, with meditation, with coaching, um, and making sure that people have their head in the game and uh, at the same time stay centered in, grounded in their heart space. And, and I'm just noticing if I look outside there, uh, that does not look like Los Angeles. So when I said no. good morning, you're one of the good mornings. Where, where are you at today, Kirsty? I am stuck in Sydney 
in uh, quarantine in not the worst place in the world, a amazing property on the harbor here. So I'm doing okay. So if you're going to be quarantined and not be able to get back to your home, not in such a horrible place to be. Yeah. Well, again, yeah. thank you so much. I, I called, uh, uh, I actually chatted Kirsty and said, this is what I need to do. Uh, can you join me? And within minutes, she's like, absolutely, whatever you need. Uh, likewise, Matthew, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you just got through hosting a, <laughs> an entire live stream uh, for a, three days with us at Exchange. So welcome back and uh, give you an opportunity to also say hello to everyone. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Exchange was fantastic this year. I mean, the energy was great. And, you know, I'm glad we were still able to hold it. Um, all things considered, I, I actually um, uh, love doing the, the hosting, but it was just great to catch up with everyone. I'm also thankful that you're doing this kind of session right now, uh, because in addition to all the communication and all the education, all the support, uh, I, I also agree that having just a time to sort of sit back and look at the big picture and the context uh, in which we find ourselves today is as necessary, not only to getting through this, but the other side better, stronger for whatever, you know, uh, life presents to all of us. And, uh, you know, I've been in the business for 30 years uh, as a mentor in various different ways. I love to remind myself that change is our industry's middle name, you know, uh, making uh, uh, a, a good thing out of difficult times and helping our clients take advantage of whatever the times are is what we do for a living. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad to just be able to contribute to this conversation because I believe that uh, we have ha are now proving what the most important thing in this business is, which is relationships that matter. Uh, and, uh, and now we're having a chance to prove that for ourselves, for our families, but obviously for our family, you know, as a, as a brand and in our, in our shops, and in our communities, because our clients are our neighbors, you know, uh, we we live with them. And so this is a great uh, opportunity for us to show that they matter to us uh, in ways that go way beyond just what our jobs are. So appreciate the chance to be here. Again, I'm also so glad you're here. I think we've got two incredible guests uh, this evening uh, that we're going to be able to talk about some interesting things. As Kirsty was saying, we've already had a bit of a conversation tonight, uh, kind of some of the, the things that we want to share. And what's interesting is the different perspectives that I think all three of us will bring to the table that I hope will be very valuable uh, for our for our audience. Um, I wanna get right into this because the, the the reality is I think there is an elephant in the room, uh, Kirsty, and it's an elephant that I think you can, uh, I think we all add to, but you can certainly do. Uh, you know, the reality is we don't know what's ahead and, I, and the fear of the unknown is probably one of the greatest fears that we all have. Uh, and then there's a the fear of the, the maybe we know because of the way the news and everything is pushing this, you know, we're not quite sure what to believe, which is also very uncomfortable. So, you know, I know myself as much as I, I, I uh, you know, I believe I, I, I'm, I'm focused and I'm, I'm doing the right things. Every once in a while, there's a little voice in the back of my head where kind of, you know, gives me that that sense of insecurity or, or fear or, or I just, you know, I let my mind go. And, you know, that's not a good, good thing to do. And, and, uh, and again, I'm not typically a person that gets a lot of anxiety either, but I've definitely experienced a little of that. Part of it's being, uh, if you will, trapped in my, my home space. Uh, part of that is just the idea that I'm not in control and I like to be in control and, and I'm in control of little things, but not the big thing. So let's talk about that because fear is your, uh, is your topic. So how, how can yeah. I, anyone else that's, that's listening to this, kind of manage to some of that fear and anxiety that even if we don't want to admit, we probably are dealing with a little bit. Yeah, I think the first thing is acknowledging that it's completely normal. And no matter how much you've worked on this, you know, I've probably spent my entire, like at least the last 25 years of my life in, in deep fear, you know, pushing myself into situations where I'm moving countries, I'm changing careers, um, doing new things, climbing mountains, literally, uh, all those kinds of things that bring up, you know, newness and uncertainty. And so what I would say is that even for someone who's doing that, I had, as you say, these moments of anxiety in the past uh, days and weeks as things are changing so rapidly. So I think the first thing is to acknowledge that it's okay and that it's normal for us to feel that that there are going to be 
triggers and everyone's in a different place not to be judging people who maybe haven't caught up to where you are that this is for a lot of people very similar and and for many a grief cycle there's the feelings of denial of anger of loss of acceptance and we're all going through that at different um paces people around and angry that other God and aren't as serious about lockdown, all of that. We have to just understand that honor where you are, uh, educate and inform, but stay in your lane with that stuff and just process, you know, even right now, taking a minute, it, this is after hours and it's probably the first time a lot of people have stopped all day. Just take a deep breath with me. Take a deep breath and ask yourself, where are you at? You know, giving yourself this time in this hour, this call to check in with what is going on with you, what is coming up for you, um, giving yourself space because being busy all day and go going in survival mode, you might not have the time in those moments to deal with it, but then when you can't sleep at night or you're waking in the middle of the night, I'm hearing from a lot of people taking Valium, a lot of people getting on the wine. So the first things we start doing is numbing those feelings and what we need to do is be willing to sit with them, be willing to feel them fully, be willing to understand that they're a part of the process and not to Band-Aid them because they will, that's exactly what you'll do. You'll just be Band-Aiding them for the next month. Now, just so I understand, when you say sit with those feelings, you know, on one side I'm thinking that I need to to push them away so they they don't bother me, so so smother those feelings. But then you're <laughs> then you're also saying, so, uh, when we, with, how does right, that, does that work? when we when we so, so focus? So we're gonna we're gonna get into the strategies later in the call, but the the short answer to that is. In the day, you may be in crisis mode and you may need to get through your day and you're going to have to have a lot of strategies for maintaining your energy and shifting your state and staying in the game. But the flip side of that is if you never sit with how you're feeling, you are going to end up dependent or an alcoholic or an addict, you know, or just depressed um, and unable to sleep. And, and long term, a week, two weeks, three, you can't sustain that. So at some point, it's going to catch up with you. So there has to be moments, there has to be windows, there has to be space. And for me, I build that in within my day. It's, you know, whether it's meditation, whether it's at two o'clock, taking a check yourself before you wreck yourself break uh, at the end of the day, certainly. But it's, in, it's particularly in the after hours, it's making sure that you give yourself then some breathing space. You don't just go straight into everything with the family um, and distraction, Netflixing, drinking, uh, taking the Valium to go to bed. It's making sure in those moments that you check in with how am I feeling, what am I feeling, and then using some of the strategies that we're going to talk about later in the call. Right. And later, uh, for you watching, one of the things we are going to do is a couple of lightning rounds of very specific things that you can do uh, to, to help check yourself uh, uh, as we go through that, uh, Matthew, what uh, what would you add uh, to what Kirsty said, or what other techniques, or what are your thoughts wrapped around dealing with that fear and that anxiety, the elephant in the room, if you will? Yeah, I I, I completely agree with those comments, and I would, I guess, what I generally do in these circumstances is try to add context, right? So I believe that for us. Uh, understanding how we feel right now is very important. Understanding what's causing that feeling, is, it comes in two levels. So on one hand, it's uh, a matter of uh, things that are triggering that automatically in our brain. And we're going to talk a little bit about how to how to handle those triggers. But remembering that we have two brains, right? We have our emotional intelligence, which is triggered by stimuli. And then we supercomputer. That's our mind. And that mind can help us right now by having a sense of context. You know, and the context right now is, um, is really this uh, move from calculated risk to uh, to, to unlimited uncertainty. And so, and so let me just take a moment to explain what I mean by that. Look, we, we're all in some form of a business where we decided on some calculated risks. You know, if I'm a if I'm a licensed partner, if I'm an advisor, I'm saying, you know, when I started my career in this industry, okay, I'm going to take some calculated risks. I'm going to invest 
some of my own funds. I'm going to spend time learning. I'm going to, you know, do some things that seem risky, but they're calculated. I'm going to call some prospects. I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to network. But, you know, those are calculated because we realize that the benefits of them outweigh the small risks. So that's the industry we're in to begin with. That's our lives on a day-to-day basis. You know, never mind the ordinary other risks, you know, all the wonderful things that make life worth living, driving and flying and scuba diving and whatever those wonderful things are. The challenge right now is that the context has gone basically, uh, you know, 10, 20, 30, 100 times greater for us. We're not just uh, dealing with a series of calculated risks because our industry is experiencing some change, some innovation, something like that. Uh, we're actually in a sort of existential space where we are now in unlimited um, uncertainty. And that unlimited uncertainty is is big. It's a big picture, right? Think about it. We're, you know, we're prevented from doing normal things, going to the market, leaving our homes, going on vacation, etc. So when I think about like, how do I deal with my emotions, I try to give myself permission to remember that it's perfectly cool to have these emotions in terms of I, I can work with them. But it's not my fault. I didn't do anything. I'm in this unlimited uncertainty space. And as we'll talk about in a few minutes, there are techniques that we can all take to move ourselves back down to calculated risk, move ourselves back down to a sense of control, you know, and that's obviously uh, one of the most important things in our lives. It's great to be smart and informed and try hard and all of that, but it's also that we have to have a sense of control and certainty that the results of our efforts will take us somewhere. When we don't have that right now, that actually freezes all of our other efforts. It freezes our business efforts. It freezes our normal relationships at home. It freezes a lot of things that we were navigating uh, pretty well before this. And and you know, just a quick little side note here. I'm sure that many people on this call, if they were to dial back their minds a month or two from today and they said, what was I worried about a month or two ago? You know, what were my anxieties then? What were my fears then? You know, we talked about industry uh, disruptors and all those kinds of things. And right now we're not thinking about any of those, are we? Right. Our minds have moved to a totally different space. So we have to recognize in a way that we're operating in a new context. And that just requires some different skills, some new skills and some old skills that we've had all along uh, that are going to benefit us, ultimately then benefit our family, our peers at work, our peers in the industry and our clients who are basically our neighbors. Uh, Matthew, as you're, uh, by the way, before we go any further, I'll just let you know, uh, our audience is huge. We have definitely have set a lot of records when it comes to the size of our live stream audience. We're approaching a thousand, a thousand people. And I know there's a few watch parties too. So yay. Yeah, that's and fabulous. Yay, shout out to the watch parties. And, and, and so and I, I, want, I want to add something no, to that. One other thing, Kirsty, I just want to say, I did not mention this. So, uh, and some of you are smart enough to know that I do have my Engelin Folkers uh, Google chat up here. And anyone who wants to can chat me. If you don't know my name, I'm Anthony Hip. <laughs> so all you have to do is go into Google chat. I'd actually love for all of you to open up your Google chat and, and, uh, and send me a chat message. Uh, anything you want to add, any comments, any questions, uh, go ahead and put it out here. Any ideas that you have that you might want me to share, but chat me, even if it's just to say hello, uh, I'll pass your messages on uh, as I can. So chat me on our Google chat. It's just Anthony Hit. So uh, Kirsty, you wanted to add to that. And then I want to get back to this panic to power concept that yeah. I know you talk about, Matthew, but go ahead, Kirsty. So with this, you know, Matthew said something really interesting there, this line of navigating well last month. The, where were we last month? And you mentioned a couple of times we're using this word uncertainty. So Buddha has this great quote that says that life is an illusion. And I think that on a spiritual level, if we can go there, um, you know, what we also need to look at, there, there's, there's this business level, there's this level of what the life of illusion that we were creating but then on this other level, what we're going through right now is this stripping away of our identity, of things that we thought were important, of what we created in our illusion. And so the uncertainty and the trigger, like this is probably one of the, there is nothing greater that you could push and stick a, a finger into a wound for a human beings than that button that is being pushed right now. So our work in this time is to learn to get comfortable with the uncomfortable, to be willing to sit in our shit, as I said earlier on our pre-call, 
And this is calling us in a way that most of us have never had to do before. I, I, you know, for me, I've been in training for this. I am so ready. But it doesn't mean it still doesn't push my buttons and I'm just more aware of them. So for everyone who's new to this, being willing to get comfortable in the uncomfortable, to be willing to say I'm my biggest teacher and learning in these months is going to be finding a deep inner trust, finding trust that I am always okay and being served in a greater context and that this is directing me in some way, shape or form that maybe I won't see till later in the rear vision mirror, but that this is serving me in a greater way, that this uncertainty is actually going to be an amazing teacher. And I think if we can start to see that and understand that right now we might be in our triggers, but learning to recognize those triggers is also a big part of this journey. I, I, I love that. And you know, I, I one of the, you know, if you will, looking at the silver lining, because again, there's obviously a, a lot of, 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 of negative and, and, and sad things that are happening around us right now. And I, and I don't want to uh, dismiss that, but I do believe there will be an opportunity to learn, uh, to become better people, maybe to become a better planet. I mean, I, I don't want to take it too far out in that idea. Uh, but even in this industry, I've heard a lot of people talking about the idea, the things that we're almost being forced to do now that we should have maybe been doing already. Uh, I look at our system, the, the system we're using right now to do this conversation. We've had this system for, for four years, five years. Um, the adoption rate has gone from, you know, uh, 20, 25% to like 80% in the last week. And so we're already better about that. So I do think there's a lot of opportunity to, to become better people, to become a better organization, to become a better industry hopefully to become a better planet as a little bit of an idea. By the way, the, the, the messages are now just firing in here. Yeah, I mean, we're hearing them. Ping, I ping, know. ping, I ping. Like, you, might... it, well, you can't hear them, but yeah. I love okay. that. you can mute that. Uh, uh, I love that. Matthew, were you going to add, or I want to go to your panic to, to uh, power because. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I want to go again, but I just want to comment what you just said, because I think that's, you know, we've been talking about for a while, uh, in the industry as a whole and in in England vote specifically right so like there's a lot of things now that are proving the point at all along which is here are the competitive advantage going forward. there are so many people been on auto you know so I tried to say well think back a few months ago what you were worried about but also think about some things you might have taken for granted and you know I, I feel actually kind of bad right now for some people in our business who thought that the only thing they needed to do was automate their, you know, uh, technology or somehow send out things automatically or let the computer do the stuff for them. Truth be told, you know, some of those things might actually fall under strain right now. But you know what never falls under strain? Good relationships don't fall under strain. Good conversations don't fall under strain. Nice open stories for each other don't fall under strain. And so I really look at this um, broader um, time in our industry as a microcosm of what you just said, Anthony, for our world, right? So you know, you might not have known your neighbor uh, as well as you thought you did until this crisis happened. Now you and your neighbor are ready to help each other. You're, you're, you, know, you know what kind of job they have and whether they're getting laid off or, you know, so I actually look at this broadly speaking as yes, great for the world, but also really good for our industry in terms of uh, fundamental things that have, have made the industry the place that I've chosen 30 years to be in. And so, you know, I, I I just want to sort of pick up on that right there. Well, then uh, agreed. And I think if I'm muted, then maybe you all can hear all these messages coming in. Otherwise, uh, that's a technical issue that we didn't think about. <laughs> that's all right. I, I love hearing them. They make me feel they make me feel good that people are listening. They're yeah. definitely listening. Uh, trust me, it, it's like the whole switch. Back in the day when I did radio, you know, a thousand years ago, you you, you get the, the phones to light up. Uh, well, light up. Yeah. lighting yeah. up, but they're also making. <laughs> If you can't mute it, you might be able to just turn the volume down. Well, yeah. when I do, then I can't hear you. So there's the challenge. Oh. <laughs> in, my, in, my little home, in my little home studio here, we haven't quite figured that out. So that's all right. Uh, but uh, but that being said, I want to talk about something because I, I've read a couple of your posts, Matthew, and you and I have talked about this, and I, and I think you've touched on it. But I just want to go. I, I love the phrase to begin with. 
uh, from panic to power. And, and, and I've had my little panics, if I'm being honest, but I've also uh, felt very empowered as I've dealt with them. And, uh, and in some cases, those panics have actually led to something uh, that, was, that was pretty amazing. So can you talk to a little bit of that whole concept of your panic to power? Sure, absolutely. Let me just start with the real base is a reminder that all of us have been through challenges. Our lives are a series of challenges and victories, and we're all here today. We, we made it through. We adapted, adopted, and grew. We didn't just survive. I, I really don't love that phrase. We became better, and we continued to grow. And part of that, if you look back at every one of those moments in your lives, where that moment you were in panic, something unexpected happened, and you needed to come up with a way to regain power. Now, you already know what the answer I'm about to say is. You made a plan. And so the key for us in terms of overcoming panic right now is to make a reasonable, I don't mean you have to change the, you have to even change your entire business. You can simply make a plan for this week. You, in for this month and see where things happen. I mean, I think about as what I do when mentoring someone, and all of us mentor someone, you know, in our own way, we mentor our clients when they're getting into the housing uh, transaction, the nexus. So here's the interesting thing. When, when we are, by definition, trying anything new, and this is just new at high velocity, we might start out with a lot of willingness. We're interested, we're excited try something new. And right now, we might not feel excited to do this new, but we are compelled by the gravity of the circumstances uh, to, to take action. The problem is that that's our, our, our will. We have high will at this point, but we have low skill. We, we just don't know what to do. Yeah, we can, you know, do some essentials that we used to do, but, you know, how do you take uh, actions in terms of your job that um, you know you can't be in person from. So we have a lot of will, not a lot of skill. And so to move from panic to power, what we have to realize is that we need a lot of direction. So when someone as a, as a try something new, when all revved up, essentially what I say to them is, just do this today. Don't worry about tomorrow, next week, or when you'll become a master of the art of anything. Just do this. And so when you think about when you try a new skill, you ask someone, what should I do first? Let's say that I've been in the business for 20 years. I'm super successful in many of the skills, but I'm trying something new, a new technology, a new price point, a new customer type. Well, I've got to talk to one before I talk to a thousand. I have to make one video before I make a video every day. I have to post one thing well before I post a hundred. In many ways, that highly directive step-by-step -step thing is what we all need. And frankly, we need it first for ourselves. We need a daily plan that says, just do this one thing, get it done, check it off as an accomplishment, do the next thing tomorrow. And they don't this is not gigantic. I'm not asking you to like go from the low diving board to the 100 foot diving board. Take something you can that either you haven't been doing yet, maybe you put off for a while and you now have some time to focus. You know, maybe is just call. Well, maybe tomorrow is clean up that data and die in a clean up. Maybe then is try using a tool that you haven't really met. And maybe the next day after that is saw in some other way, read a book, take an on, watch a TED talk. Again, the plan brings us back to power because we make progress by doing these little directive things. And then let me just wrap this up by saying, that's also what our clients need right now. And that's also what our family needs right now. And that's what our neighbors need right now, because we're leaders in our own little sub communities. And what we need to be able to do is say to our family this today and talk to our clients and say, don't worry about the big picture. How about the first thing we can do is, you know, double finances, take a look at all your automatic payments, uh, make sure you understand what the, you know, uh, maybe some quick policy changes are. Do little things with them. You give them a little ounce of power. You don't have to give them a pound of power, a little ounce of power that help people move from panic to a sense of control. And that's where we'll continue to be of value. And obviously, I, I want to talk more about the, the control aspect in just a second. 
Uh, uh, Amy uh, is someone that was chatting with me here. And uh, and one of the things that Amy is saying is, you know, she was having this great, this great run. Spring was so good. All of her activities were so good. She was doing the things she was supposed to do. And the fruits of her labor were materializing. And now she kind of feels like she's stalled. And, uh, and I, she's not calling it a panic, but at the same point, I think there is a, I do sense a little, yeah, I'm stalled yeah. and I don't know what to do. And I think you're talking that, can you speak to it a little bit? Then Kirsty, I want to come to you on this too. Yeah, definitely. So uh, if you if you'll humor me for a moment, uh, as a philosopher, uh, uh, we often quote other philosophers. So I'd like to uh, quote the philosopher Tyson. Uh, you might not have recognized him. His name is Mike Tyson. And he used to actually say, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. And, you know, I'm not trying to be flip about this. We've all had this happen. I'm actually writing a, a post that will come out in a day or two. And I think back to the times where I was doing everything right. I was showing up, putting in the work, doing the going the extra mile. Uh, things were starting to be successful. And then something happens. And by the way, I want to reinforce that this isn't anything any of us did, right? So this is an external circumstance. This is like September 11th. This is like uh, a natural disaster. We have to remember not to take responsibility for the crisis, but to take it responsibly. So it's really critical that everyone remembers that. So yeah, we want to be responsible in terms of doing the right things. So what happens in these circumstances is something external, that's, it's, it, it's not fun, but it's, it's stopping us. What we need to do right now is to say, I can deal with this, but what it requires for me to do is to not uh, move into panic. Oh my gosh, I, I was thing right and now I can't be rewarded for it but to move into plan and so yeah I, you know I, I would just encourage everybody to remember a time when things were going awesome and then maybe they hit a bump in the road and remember this you got over that bump through that bump beyond that bump and you will get beyond this one as well and it is not your fault that the bump occurred but it will be your fault that you get beyond it in a good way right uh, I, exactly. I couldn't agree more. And by the way, the comments that we're getting are really good. So keep keep up the great work. Um, uh, and by the way, there's a question, Matthew. Are you wearing a velvet jacket? That was the question. <laughs> uh, that was the most important question I've seen so far. And and I so won't important. say that was uh, Jim Ramsey uh, who asked the, uh, the the question. But uh, I, I, I do Kirstie, live in Vegas, and uh, yes, <laughs> of course. Um, uh, uh, Kirsty, you. Um, with, yeah, I want to touch on some of this. There's a couple of things that come to my mind because yeah. I remember in, in our elite retreat, also in uh, in uh, an exchange, uh, you were talking about going up the mountain and you were talking about some of the panic and some of the things that was setting in the anxieties. And, and you kind of had this like, I don't know, it was, it was like check yourself, change yourself, chart your, yeah. chart your course or something. But anyway, can you speak to that? Because it seems like very apropos right now. Yeah, so for everyone who was there um, and anyone who was not, it's really when you're on that mountain and you're going up this climb and you hit these different, you know, it's the hero's journey um, for those who are familiar with Joseph Campbell's work. But we we are going through trials and tribulations and there's going to be times when you are running up that mountain and times where you have scraped your knees and times where you are broken and um, on the ground and don't think that you can possibly climb any further. Um, and all of those moments, there's going to be people who help you and lift you up and carry you. And so for me, what I do when I'm climbing a mountain and, and as Matthew and Anthony, we have all been through times where everything has been stripped away, uh, times of brokenness, times of scraping our knees and times of struggling with that climb and having other people carry us on their backs. And for me, the three steps that I always look at is um, checking myself before I wreck myself, which is really about checking in with yourself, self-awareness, knowing where you're at, um, changing my thoughts and charting my course. And so I want to speak to, you know, using the example of the lady who felt that things were stalled. Um, so checking in with yourself for some is checking in that right now you may be in those early phases of the grief cycle and you're not quite ready to run up the mountain. You're needing to put some dressing on your wounds and to be taken care of and to be carried a little bit of the way. You may need first to grieve the loss of you thought that everything was, you know, I remember writing a post a few years back where I said this unknowing will be my undoing. I felt like, I mean, 
uh, my mental health, you know, you could have checked me into a psych ward for a couple of days there. Um, and I was in a really bad place around sitting in the unknowing. It is so frustrating. And I remember saying in that same post, there were words that um, kind of crying to the universe. Why are you doing this? Why? I felt like I was being punished. I felt like uh, I had done everything right. I had leapt and grown my wings on the way down. I had done all the things that you should be doing on this journey. I had taken all the risks. So why was it not happening for me? Why was it being taken away? And this is the part that there's this balance of being where you are now, being in your process, accepting that maybe you need to grieve, and then knowing that later down the track, because right now you might not be willing to see the rear vision mirror, and that's okay. You might not even want to hear from people talking about that um, just yet, because it may just feel like, how can I possibly think that this is going to be a good thing? So honour yourself, check in with yourself, check yourself before you wreck yourself is also about checking in with your understanding that fear does a whole lot of things to your brain. It, um, I just realised I'm looking at the wrong camera too. So, <laughs> so if I'm not speaking to you, but the, 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 when we go into fight or flight, it is that old kind of reptilian part of the brain that thinks a lion's coming to chase us that isn't real. And so part of it is talking yourself through that process it is, um, you know, the brain shrinks, we suffer memory loss, we have an inability to have social skills and interaction. So for a lot of people, you can't be functioning at your best, you can't be the leader that you need to be when you're in that space. So you may need to pump the brakes, you may need, you know, I took four days before I even did a live to my people who are relying on me and wanting me to be here at this time, but I knew I needed to check myself before I wreck myself. And so give yourself the time and space you need before you're then able to step up and be the leader that you need to be. Um, so checking yourself, then changing your thoughts. I think that when Matthew was just talking there, you know, what it made me also think of is, um, there is so much research around the mind-body connection. People who, I lived with someone who was temporarily paralyzed and rehabilitated. We know that people, the, the um, uh, placebo effect, all of that, our thoughts become our reality. So there's also an element of you don't want to stay in that grief cycle too long and be too stuck and to start, you know, with all this compulsive washing and hand washing, you are starting to believe that I'm going to get this virus, I'm going to be sick, I'm going to be destitute, I'm going to not have a job, you know. So you also have to check in before you wreck yourself with changing your thoughts and at what point are you ready to go, okay, I need to think differently about this and then there's the um, charting my course, which is really having a plan, stepping into that power place, going, what am I going to do differently now so that I control my thoughts, control my reality, don't wreck myself and am ready to now take the steps to climb up the mountain that I need to. Matthew, it looks like you want to add something. I, I just I just love everything that Christy just said. And I, I want to just um, I want to just contribute to it to ands to it you know one of the ands is and we love to say fight or flight but we also should remember there's a third reaction right F fight flight or freeze yeah. and it is it is natural to freeze you know it's just part of our wiring give yourself permission to freeze knowing that you will thaw right knowing that someone will be there for you whether it is a family member whether it is your 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 um uh, a peer, you know, a fellow advisor, whether it is, you know, your manager, someone will be there to, to, to put their arms around you in some way and say, let's figure this out. We're going to, we're in this together, but, but don't feel bad about that. That's the natural, normal first reaction. Um, and then the second thing that I wanted to just sort of add to that, which is kind of, I think re related to this is, you know, I, and I, and I love the idea of what are you telling yourself, right? What is it that you're telling yourself? Don't, load up on, I've got to wash my hands a hundred times a day. I mean, obviously wash your hands to be safe, but remind yourself that you're making, um, you're building habits with that. And so don't build, build responsible habits right now, but don't accidentally build habits that'll hold you back in the future. You know, one thing we talked about in our pre-call, I just want, I think is a good time to bring it up is 
You've got to control the words that are going in your head right now. You've got to control the feeds, as I like to say, right? You've got to be able to say to yourself, okay, I have a need for some news. I have a need for information. I have a need to stay informed. I have a need to communicate. All good. But at the same time, I have to control the amount and the quantity and the rapidity of all that coming in. So look, we're all working at home now. If you thought you used the computer a lot before, I bet you're on the computer 15 hours a day now. What's open in the background? How many tabs? How many beeps? How many notifications? Is there you know, news rolling on a TV because you're working from the dining room table? That is critical, not just in terms of the emotional impact because news is designed around anxiety. And, you know, I think we all realize that right now. But more importantly, the silent things that it's repeating in the back of our minds. So, you know, have a process for getting information, staying informed, but then have a way to turn that off and, you know, replace it with some good words, replace it with uh, a, a, a poem, replace it with something that's important to you. I just, I just, you know, I have a bunch of books that I've had on my shelf that were so meaningful to me over the years, and I'm rereading them, just just passages of them that, that stuck with me, or maybe just a few sentences from someone. Uh, you know, the idea that we can add to not just receive, but add purposefully to those words in the back of our minds is, is important in terms of breaking past these barriers and return to that success, that successful state that we were. Well, you're, you're talking about control and, uh, and uh, I mean, there's so many pieces there I'd like to unpack, you know, the, the, the part about what to watch. And I think when we do the lightning round, I'm gonna bring up a couple of those thoughts because, well, I'll just say it now. I mean, when my first day's home, working out of my home, I did what I used to do years ago, is I flipped on the news channel and I had it up there. And uh, about four hours into it, I just wanted to go sit in the corner and suck my thumb and cry. I mean, it was like, okay. And, and it wasn't like I was getting new information. It was just the same information made more sensational, made more extreme. And I had to you know, basically go back to thinking, wait a minute, what is the purpose of this network? It's to tell me some information, but it's also to keep me watching. And, and right. the way you do that, we all know that. If it bleeds, it leaves. I mean, that's been around for as long as there's been yeah. media. If there's, if it's sensational, if it's scary, we we tune in to watch it. But it, it, it I, and I learned that I had to control, as you said earlier, how much of that I get. So I want to know what's going on. I, I, I've got my data sources. I look at that. But then I turn it off. And I've also found that what I try to do is to dilute the anxiety that can come from that by watching something positive or something funny. Uh, oddly enough, I'll admit this to you since it's just the three of us talking here as friends. Uh, you know, I have found on Apple TV, the Golden Girls. You remember the Golden Girls? <laughs> They're little 20 minute shows and they are funny as hell. And by the way, Nothing in those shows is as serious as what we've been dealing with the last 10 years, 20 years, but they're hysterical and it, and it helps me. It's a little nostalgic, so it feels good. It's, it's a little mindless, so it's, it feels good and it makes me laugh and that makes me feel good. But, but to the control idea, I also look at the, uh, the serenity prayer and Matt, you look like you've frozen up on us, uh, but you know that, that serenity prayer that so many of us know, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. And, and I think you you talk about control a lot. So do you want to go on that point about controlling what you can and not controlling and, or letting go of the things that you can't Matthew? Sure. Let, let me just, um, let me just put a, a couple of uh, thoughts around that. So the first is, um, and I think it relates to the question also that we got. So I, I love this theme altogether. We have to remember, month ago, we didn't control as much as we thought we controlled, right? We didn't control the market. We didn't control the jobs market. We didn't control the credit market. We didn't control anything. We don't even control the local the local farmers market, right? So the idea that we accept any responsibility for all of that, we've got to be able to part with to be able to say there's something happening and I don't have to take responsibility to fix all of those things, but what can I control? I can control how I'm reacting and I can control how I'm acting. So how I'm reacting and how I'm acting. And that means that I want to not 
even worry about predicting how all this runs out, which is sort of a, an ancillary challenge. I, I hear a lot of people online saying like, well, when this gets all fixed, well, we're not sure when, and we're not sure how, and we're not sure what it will look like. And while we all hope it will be quickly, we also want it to be right. And and what I have just myself is I've just given up trying to worry about what it will look like then. And I've used this time to say, well, what will I need then? Not predicting what it will look like then, but what will I need? Right minds, like you said, I'm listening to motivational things in the morning. I listen to Jim Rohn. I listen to Zig Ziglar. I'm reading Benjamin Franklin again because I love his little one-liners. I don't care what makes you go, but whatever makes you go, get those words going. I'm getting my mind in place. I'm doing a little writing every morning, and I'm getting my mind in the right place. So I'm getting mindset right. I'm getting my skill set right. I am reading all the books that have sat over there on my desk that I said I would get to it at the holiday time, but I didn't get to. Well, you know what? I have committed to getting to them now because I have the time to get my skill set right. So my, my mindset right, my skill set right, and now I'm going to rebuild my confidence because here's what I know. I cannot predict or control what it's going to look like when all this gets better. I have faith that it will get better, but here's what I do know. Whatever it's going to look like, I'm going to be ready for it. That's what I want to know, say to myself. Whatever it will look like, I'm going to be ready for it. We didn't know what the financial crisis was going to look like when it was fixed. We didn't know what was going to happen after September 11th. We didn't know what was going to happen after World War II. But what we did know was we could get our minds, our skills, and our confidence ready to handle the world that's coming at us. That, to me, is the critical thing about sort of giving up control. I don't have to fix the world. I'm taking responsibility for me. So when the world is ready, I'm going to be ready. So I think, yeah, yeah, I think this is the perfect time for me to say, you know, Matthew Ferrara. <laughs> I'm like, here he is reading all the books, using this time so wisely. I think you lost some weight, right? And I gained three yeah. pounds. <laughs> I'm binge eating at the fridge and he's, you know, exercising. And so I think this is fantastic because I'm just, I have like a huge amount of envy because I want to be Matthew Ferrara right now. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who are listening going, I should be better. So I want to let you know that it's okay if you're over here self-soothing and you're eating a lot of chocolate bullets. Like I actually have a stash in my bedroom in the cupboard. I don't normally do that. <laughs> How did they make it into the bedroom? They're not even in the pantry anymore. So here's the thing. We, you, wherever you're at, it's okay. It's okay if, like Anthony, you're um, in rocking in the in fetal position after hours of CNN on the on the channel. I remember being in Peru a while back, and the only thing you could get was that was English speaking was um, uh, CNN. And it was on for hours and hours and hours. And I just remember thinking exactly like you were saying, there was nothing, no new information coming in and it was repetitive, but it was also, it was brainwashing. It literally was brainwashing the entire world who was watching it. So choosing what you are watching is so important. Choosing um, where you decide to get your information from. If you only need to know one update a day, who are you going to get it from and how can you get it in five minutes in the morning or five minutes at night or choosing like don't even engage with it for the first, we're going to talk later about morning rituals, but making sure that it's not the first thing you're engaging with if it doesn't need to be. If you've <laughs> He's got the ice cream out, go the Arctic Zero. So here's, I need to go get my chocolate bullet. So here's the thing, no, wherever I'm, you're at. I'm totally listening. I'm listening to everything you have to say. Go ahead. So you need to hit the reset button if you are someone like me and Anthony that has maybe let it go on a little bit too long and we need to be more like Matthew because <laughs> that's where you need to be long term, like to sustain your energy levels, to be able to get through this in the coming months. You can't be eating how I've been eating in the past few days and we can't be, you know, Matthew and, sorry, Anthony caught straight away that, oh, my God, after four hours of this, look at how it's changed my energy and how I'm feeling, and that isn't the state I want to be in. So choosing consciously how we're going to shift our state takes us checking in with ourselves, recognising your baseline, noticing when you wake up in the morning how you feel, and then noticing when you're triggered, noticing what triggers you, going, oh, my gosh, I was feeling really great till about 10 a.m., 
when I turned on that news station or someone sent me that email. If you notice the triggers, you can control the triggers and then go, okay, this is not working for me. I need to move those chocolate bullets out. I need to put away that ice cream. I can't be having a pint a night. Someone said the other day, is it considered an essential need to go to the shopping centre to get more ice cream because you've gone right. through two gallons already. Right. So, you know, the point is this is your opportunity to reset right now. Get honest with yourself. Get real with yourself. Notice what you're doing. Notice what your triggers are. Pay attention in the coming days. Grieve if you need to grieve, but then start going into reset, start going into planning, start changing those thoughts, start charting that course. And I think that's so important because I, I, I'm joking. But this is really good, by the way. Um, <laughs> I'm jealous. I want to just like scoop through. It's good. And it's chocolate. Um, but I, I think it is okay. Again, it's kind of like uh, acknowledging your fear or your anxiety. It's okay right. to do a little bit of that as long as you know that I'm doing this probably not for the right reason. And it doesn't make me feel the way I want to feel. It doesn't give me the energy I want to, to have and to be able to put it away before you finish off the third pint. Uh, you know, like a lot of us, I, I've eaten a lot more, you know, I, I found out by the way, putting on sweatpants every day is not a good idea. Uh, you know, a, a fitted suit fits different than sweatpants. And if you uh, you put on sweatpants every day and you're eating all the goodies that you bought to be, uh, to you know, have just in case, I'm gonna run out of my just in case food and probably gain 20 pounds before I get out of this, uh, this place. Um, before we go, we're, we're, uh, this has been great. And, and thank both of you again for doing this. And the network is just uh, loving. I'm getting so many comments. I'd like to do a little lightning round here of just some of the very specific things that, that you all do in some cases. But before I get to that, Matthew, I've got another question for you. We all know one of the things you do normal in, in normal days, and it was actually a conversation you and I had recently that you're probably being quarantined. This is one of the th challenges you have because you like being out and taking photos. So, so the question that's coming to, to people's mind is, of the photos that we can see right behind you, which one of those is your favorite and why? And then I'm gonna do this lightning round. Oh, it's wonderful. Um, so uh, of the ones that are behind me, I think the one that probably is my favorite, you know, and, and by the way, these are built in the way that they're easily movable, replaceable, if you will. But I, I think right now it's gonna have to be this one. So. Um, as most people know, it is not, I'm not a, I don't do a lot of, not the same photography. Journey for me here, here is where I started when I, you know, was at high school and decided to shift from being in chemistry to being in the philosophy department. And this is last year when I capped off a 25 year dream of spending 10 days in Tokyo uh, and, and photographing the people in the streets and the wonderful things there. So I, I, this for me is like a metaphorical journey and I love having it behind me because when I walk in every day, it just reminds me I'm still on my journey. But this, this one is my favorite right now because it's reminding me, it's reminding me that to get through this, I'm just gonna have to be able to look in the mirror, accept what's there, accept what's there, and then give myself permission to go through a process and on others who are also in collection with me to uh, do this. So that for me is a bit of a metaphor. Perfect. Okay. Lightning round. Quick, quick, uh, quick actionable items that our, our network can write down and, and maybe be inspired by or add to their list. Uh, I, I'm a big routine person generally. And in times like this, routine is even more important. Uh, um, Matthew, do you have a morning routine and what are some highlights of your morning routine? How do you start your day? Yeah, my morning routine is really, really specific. And I, I've actually adopted uh, my seminar speaking morning routine, what I do to get ready to put on stage. I get up, I think, you know, good, you know, energy. I have lots of light. I've got all the, all the shades up. And me, the thing that really gets me going is I, uh, am, as a speaker, someone who, you know, listens, so I just have a great plan. So I would take an opportunity to build a new playlist. I'm just going to share my playlist is literate, uh, uh, in first, so it's woven through things. Great little great Churchill. I put these little energizing speeches in there. And every other track on my playlist 
is the soundtrack from a superhero movie. So <laughs> Iron Man, Superman, Spider-Man, Wonder Woman, all of them. So it's like marches, Star Wars. It's like this pack of instrumental music interspersed with powerful words from me, power words. That's it. By the time I am done that, gosh, you know, I'm ready to do what I need to do today. That's my morning routine. I, I'm, I'm like Kirstie. I want to be like you. I have what I call my happy playlist. And it's there you go. on Amazon. And it's just all these songs that make me feel energized or or make me laugh or make me nostalgic. Just a happy playlist. And I, and I listen to that playlist every morning. Uh, you know, the, the, the song that wakes me up to the songs that basically walk me out the door when I was walking out the door. And I found out playing those in the afternoon. Uh, also, also <laughs> that second dose of happy. What about you, Kirsty? Right. What, what so, are more the routine for you? So before I share mine, I want to share why that works. So when you play a specific song and it's your morning, I had a sales song and it, was, it would get me in revitalized. Or if you have a song when you walk on stage, we anchor that song. And so the reason why when you play it again, it gives you a second wind is that song for you is anchored around the morning, inspiration, getting going. So choosing, using music as anchors is powerful, but also music if we, I won't get into the spiritual woo-woo side, but basically we're all vibration, we're all frequency. So using binaural beats right now, mm -hmm. Google YouTube, binaural beats, having it playing in the background if you can't sleep at night. Using music in those ways is so powerful. For me, the most important morning routine for me actually starts as the last thing I do at night. Writing out my to-do list, I have it in a Word document and I put at the top so I can cut and paste and move it up. But whatever three things are the not negotiables that need to get done, again, so I can take away any fear, any anxiety, any stress, I don't need to look at the 150 items. I literally only need to wake up and see the two or three things highlighted in a red or a blue bold color. That's all I need to get done. If I get through more, fantastic. But for me, having that done when I finish up the night before means that starting the next morning, I can just be ready to go, open up my computer, get going. And the second most important thing for me at any point during the day, but certainly in the morning and the end of the day, is coming to center, taking one minute to close your eyes, to put on some music or just sit there like the Devi prayer for me is one of the most beautiful sound frequencies. Just sitting there and asking myself like, What's going on? How am I feeling? What do I need to shift? Am I feeling ready? You know, just tuning in and checking in. I'm gonna, uh, we're, we're almost out of time, but I wanna throw one more at you, uh, uh, Kirsty, and, and we'll, we'll, go, we'll start the other way, because this is right up your alley. Uh, it's the idea that, you know, sometimes we do need to change our mindset, or as you, as you say, shift our state. Uh, what are some things that you do uh, to, to do that, to shift your state? Dance parties, um, you know, if you, well, for me. By yourself or with others or? Yeah, just put some music on and have it shake it off with Taylor Swift. You know, the th there's this great, um, Dr. Adam Frazier calls it the, th the third space. He wrote a book on it. And what this is, is when you have a, a space A, which is a situational sometimes, the kids are there, they've spat up on you or the dogs are screaming in the house. And then you have to go to another space and that space might be an important conference call with an important client and you're feeling crappy and you need to go to this in, in space energy state of being in flow or joyfulness. So the third space is creating an opportunity to step into another space, whether it's through a dance party, using music to shift your energy to change your state, physiologically getting up. I mean, you do this. Uh, what are they called, star jumps for uh, five seconds, you're going to shift your state. But it takes choice and you have to be willing to do something to move yourself into those different spaces. Whether it's, um, you know, today my friend's homeschooling her son, she made him go put her uniform, his uniform on. So for you, a uniform might shift your state, shift you physiologically. Uh, dancing, music, there's a million ways. But what is it that you know, if you ask yourself what's your number one way to shift your energy to give yourself a mood booster, most people know what their two or three things that would do that for them are. It might be sex. You know, I just wrote a post about orgasms and how great they are for natural endorphins. I knew you would get that into the somehow. <laughs> I, had, 
I knew you would find a way to do that. Uh, I mean, I've said shit, I'm a potty mouth. <laughs> but you also talked about watching the Golden Girls and how that humour, like, you know, I mean, it's like having heroin for our brain, the oxytocin, all of the endorphins that are released through laughter or orgasm, it's all the same thing. Um, but, you know, having your chocolate ice cream, that's why we're doing all of those things. So finding a healthy way that isn't going to have you gain 50 pounds um, and isn't a substance that's going to be addictive, if we can use those things to shift our energy and our state, you know, use those mood boosters throughout the day, every few hours, Check that's the way, where the checking in yourself. I was using an Alaki band years ago. At one point I was putting alarms on my phone every two hours that just said check yourself before you wreck yourself. And for me that's just a reminder of check into my centre, take a deep breath, slow down, connect to my heart, ask myself what's going on, check in with what might have triggered me. Do I need to turn off a distraction? Do I need to not have things intruding in that are triggering me? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I, you all, I don't know if you all know Martha Melendez. Um, if you follow her on Facebook, she's probably one of the funniest. I just, she's always got, she was the one that said right after we left exchange, when, when we were just being told to wash our hands, uh, I think that the post was something like, wash your hands like you've just eaten a bag of Cheetos and you're going to an Angela Vogel's white party. Well, and, and, and Martha, you chatted me, so I feel like I have an obligation and a right to say that she just said, I've got to go now ha and have sex. So <laughs> we're going to go over just a little bit, but I want to, I want to respect everybody's time. Matthew, shifting your state. Shifting yeah, your so, um, I, I can have one, one up the, uh, uh, the idea of having sex, but I can say this, that there are some really wonderful, ways we're already trained to shift our state. So look, in this industry, we can actually take a, a skill that we know how to do and we can amplify it. And let me just show you how I would shift my mental. Um, I don't have to try harder. I can easier. What would I know better? You know, maybe I reach someone and express some gratitude. Maybe I to text or email not just an email that says I'm thinking of you I'm heed anything you have any questions we all know that how about like my my sent me an email the other excuse me an instant message the other day it was simply you know this morning I'm remembering this person who called me on 11 wondering if I was in the air and I was okay and that came to mind and I'm so full that you were there for and, and that I feel like you're here now just little posts online, etc. Use gratitude as well as just a way to shift the mind into a really powerful place. You, uh, you, you, you took one, that was mine, because I, 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 I we'll, we'll all share, but I've got my board here in front of me, and there were certain things that I wanted to make sure we talked about. Music, obviously, uh, meditation, and, uh, and, and Kirsty, if you've got time, I think at the end tonight, after we wrap up, if anybody wants to stick around for 10 minutes, and do a, a lead meditation by uh, by Kirsty. She said she'd be happy to do that. Uh, if you can in your area, get outside, get some sunshine, get some fresh air. Uh, obviously, controlling the data in and data out, get the good stuff in. But helping others is one that I have here because that that showing gratitude and helping other it also releases a lot of of uh, positive energy and, and helps bring us back to where we're at. Um, as we, I'm gonna, I, I, we could do this for another hour. This has been so good. Thank you both. But I'm going to ask you now for uh, some uh, some closing thoughts before we we wrap this up, Kirsty. Oh, um, all is divine and perfect. All is divine and perfect. Trust yourself. Trust the universe. Trust life, and understand that this is the perfect opportunity for you to go on a spiritual journey within to do your deepest inner work. The inner work is the work right now. Trust yourself in allowing yourself to let go of attachments and dissolving the ego and the identity and um, you know that, that life is an illusion, as Buddha said, understanding that, that right now life is an illusion, everything is crumbling, but you are always okay. I mean, that sounds fantastic. Matthew, some final words from you. 
You know, I'm going to just go with um, words that I loved so much, I I made them permanent. Um, so I have a tattoo on my arm that was a celebration of uh, overcoming a major health challenge 20 years ago. I, I actually had lung cancer 20 years ago and beat that. And I wanted to commemorate the, the words that I repeated to myself every single morning and put them in a place that I could remember it. So those words are real simple. And it's from an old phrase from, from Virgil's, one of Virgil's poems, which is, you know, never give in to evil, but always move more boldly against it. And, you know, it's not about, in this case, the evil, but never give in to the things that are getting in our way, whether it's a temporary setback, a little bit of confusion, major uncertainty, the real uh, uh, thought behind the philosophy is always mo move boldly against it. Those words may mean a lot to me. I, I see them every morning when I'm getting ready for the day, getting dressed. And I, I hope that whatever your words are, you know, put them somewhere you can see them, put them on your put them mirror in the bathroom, put them on your computer background, but, you know, give yourself a reminder with something powerful to move against uh, anything that's holding you back right now. Thank you both. This has been exceptional, even better than I could have possibly imagined. Uh, and, and I knew, I mean, without any question, either one of you could have filled up this entire hour with me. And having both of you, I think, is just the jolt uh, that I needed. Um, and uh, in a lot of cases, validating what I believe and, and, and what I've said. I know we, we, we talk on a regular basis about these things ourselves. And it's just so great to have you both sharing and I can tell you, I've got so many chats here, it's gonna take me another hour to get through them all tonight. But the, the remarks that I'm hearing are great. Uh, I also have, uh, can you share our playlist? And by the way, the playlist from the awards celebration has just been released today. So if, you, if you're looking for that from Exchange, it's great. Uh, a lot of other good suggestions here. Uh, if you like what we did tonight, I'm gonna to ask you to chat me again because uh, we, uh, we may do this again. This was an experiment, but an experiment that seems to have gone uh, relatively well. I, I'm just gonna kind of underscore everything that I've heard uh, tonight. And it's that we've got this. I, I see it on the, the hashtag, we're all in this together, we are. Uh, whether it is a, as a civilization or, or as a brand or as a brokerage uh, or as friends, we, we've got this. And, uh, and another one is, you know, this too shall pass. Uh, this might be one of the bigger things that we deal with in life. And, and I hope for most of us, that's, this is it. Uh, but I do believe there is, there is a light at the end of this tunnel. And I do believe that light will be uh, improvement on a lot of areas. And uh, so I, I wish all of you uh, safety. I wish all of you great health. Uh, just know we're, we're, we, will, we will get through this and days will be better. And uh, let's, uh, let's do this again sometime. Uh, Kirsty, I know you're actually going to brought this is this is cool. When you're going to experiment, it always makes sense to do a live stream inside of a live stream. But Kirsty has an audience, uh, so if you want to stick around, Kirsty's going to lead us through a, a little 10 minute uh, meditation, and then we'll uh, we'll call it a night. Matthew, once again, thank you so much, my friend. Kirsty, thank you once again, my friend. And uh, Kirsty, I'll turn it over to you now, and thank all of you for joining us tonight. We'll do it again real soon. Thank you. Thank all of you. I'm going to get you guys to um, mute yourselves while we start this. And I'm going to click record on the second screen. While you're doing that, I'm also going to thank Meredith Brainard and Sean Scott, who have been producing behind the scenes. I kept meaning to mention that. I've got one of my note cards here says that. So it's all yours, Kirsty. Thank you all. It's been so wonderful. And thank you, Anthony, for having us here, for Matthew, for such great wisdom, Meredith and Sean, for getting it happening. So I'm just going to click record, starting a live meditation. So what I want to do is just in this short bit of time that we have left um, talking live with my clients, I'm double screening and recording this meditation that really the intention is to focus on how can we release and let go anything that we might have started to store somatically in our body, in our physical body, because um, this for a lot of people is really like a um, micro trauma. So if you're tuning in and you're going to stay with us to do this meditation, I would love for you just to take your shoes off to get yourself either in a seated position with your feet on the ground or on the floor or on the bed and just get yourself comfortable and ready to just 
be in this moment to release and to let go of some of what we're starting to store. If you're feeling anxiety or stress or fear, to just trust yourself and trust your body to be with that for a few moments and to allow yourself to let it release. So closing your eyes and just tuning in, just feeling in, taking long, slow, deep breaths into the belly. And when we do this, we start to calm our parasympathetic nervous system. So just to the count of 10, I want you to breathe in and then hold for 10, then out for 10. So breathing in, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hold, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, and out for ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And just continuing at that pace with that long, slow, deep breaths, you'll notice that it's quite hard at first for us to breathe to that count. So just allowing yourself this extra time to breathe longer and slower and deeper. And on the next few breaths, I want you to breathe in love and peace and safety and calm. And as you're breathing out, I want you to make an audible sigh, releasing any tension from the shoulders, from the back, from your body, as if imagining a gray smoke coming up and out through the breath. Ah. Just take yourself through three more of those, breathing in peace and calm and love and joy and breathing out any fear, any worry, any anxiety, any stress. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> So now just continuing at a normal pace, just finding a rhythm with your breath, a nice calm rhythm. And just continuing to fill up with love and joy and peace. I want you to imagine a beautiful purple amethyst light. And this amethyst light, purple light, is like a field surrounding your entire body about an arm's length away. And in this field, in this purple light, is just you, just your own energy. I want you to lovingly and gently, in your mind's eye, visualize moving outside that field, outside that space, everyone who takes a little bit from you, everyone who drains you, customers, clients, family, friends, just lovingly and gently, Move them all outside this purple light. And some of them you may need to send out to the ocean or outer space. Just allow yourself to feel yourself arriving here. Arriving here in this moment. Arriving here in this field. Arriving here in your body. And just doing a scan from head to toe, I want you to check in and notice where there might be any tightness, any heaviness or stuckness. And just again, through the breath, imagining like a gray smoke it moving up and out from those stuck places. And feeling a beautiful, bright white light moving into those spaces, filling you up. I want you to see yourself walking along the edge of a river and there's no one else around for miles, just you and the peaceful, 
trickling sound of the river beside you. And there's a small pile of little pebbles just by your feet. I want you to pick up these pebbles with your hands. And as you walk along the river's edge, I want you to slowly throw one pebble at a time out into the river. And each pebble, I want you to allow it to represent something that you're letting go of, whether it might be some burden that you've picked up and been carrying, whether it's some stress or anxiety, whether it's a specific fear, just one at a time, taking these pebbles, allowing them to represent something that you're releasing and letting go of, and just gently placing them into the river. You could skim them like stones across the top of the water's edge. And just feeling yourself getting lighter, feeling unburdened, feeling that sense of release and letting go. Just noticing how it feels, the heaviness, the weight of those pebbles. Honouring and grieving what you're releasing and feeling the lightness as you start to release them one after the other after the other. And floating above the river stream, I want you to see like a hologram this version of you from the future, your higher self, a wiser self, a fearless self, a self that's comfortable and confident in uncertainty and in the unknown. And this self, I want you to ask it a question. I want you to ask what you most need to learn right now. I want you to ask what you most need to work on right now. And in your mind's eye, see yourself having a conversation with this wiser self, expressing any fears and uncertainty, and asking for answers. Allowing them to be of comfort, allowing them to be a strength. Just taking in some long, slow, deep breaths. Again, with every breath releasing, with every breath relaxing, with every breath letting go. And I want you to now start to imagine a beautiful golden sun that's just glorious above the river and it's washing down over your entire body. This golden burning, warm, energizing sunlight is filling your entire being, flooding through your cells, your DNA, your blood vessels, warming you from head to toe, filling your entire heart space with trust and love, and peace filling you with a readiness and knowingness 
that you are safe, that you are loved, that you are enough. I'm going to leave you guys in this space for those that want to stay connected to this heart space for a moment longer. Just keep your eyes closed. Just stay with your breath. Place your hands over your heart and connect with yourself. I'm sending you love and light wherever you are.